Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from the Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the topics from your biology course for the class 11 and 12 under the program IIT PAL. And in this series, uh, we were discussing about the animal kingdom. So if you can recall, in the previous two lectures, we have discussed about the different aspects related to this particular chapter. That is, we have discussed about the different types of criteria what people are using and what uh, that can be used to even classify the animals and why there is a need to classify the animals. Uh, subsequent to that we have also discussed about the characteristics as well as the uh, properties of the representative uh, king, uh, kingdoms like representative phylums. Uh, we discuss about the porifera, we discuss about the cylindrata, we discuss about the sitanophora and then uh, in the previous lecture we also discussed about the platyhelminthes as well as the uh, eschiahelminthes. So following to that we are actually now today going to start discussing about the, some more phylum which are belonging to the aphylomates. So if you see the uh, how the, the animal kingdom is being divided, it is being divided by utilizing the different types of criteria whether it is the level of organizations, symmetry, uh, body cavity or the siloam or the phylum. So they, these are the different phylums in, in which the animals are being divided. So uh, in the previous lecture we discussed about the cellular level of uh, uh, organizations and we discussed about the phylum porifera which is actually a isolomate as well as the mostly asymmetrical. Uh, so then we moved on to a slightly more uh, uh, higher level of organizations where we discuss about the tissue or the organ system. So within the tissue we have discussed about the radial symmetry, acylomate and then we discuss about the cylindrata as well as the cytanophora. And then we moved on to the bilateral symmetry where we uh, discuss about that the, the, uh, the animals which are having the acylomates and in that category we discuss about the platyhelminthes and we discuss several properties related to platyhelminthes and then we discuss about the pseudocylomates so within the pseudocylomates we discuss about the sk helminthes and we uh, try to compare the properties of the platyhelminthes with the sk helminthes as well so that you will be able to understand the uh, the distinct uh, characters of the platyhelminthes versus the sk helminthes and then uh, the previous lecture we said that we are going to start discussing about the true philomates like the uh, like uh, the analida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata, hemichordata and the chordata. So, uh, so the purpose of this particular type of uh, division is and the way uh, the, the, it, it has been classified is that it actually going to give you the direct connection that see how the people are being, how the animals are being evolved. Like for example, in the case of the tissue uh, or the organ system characterization or some of uh, organizations, even in within the bilateral symmetry, the organisms are it will still be present as like acylomate or pseudocylomates and that's how the organism evolves better and they become the silomates and that is a distinct advantage of the animals who are actually having the uh, the uh, true silome and uh, let's discuss about these organisms and try to understand that how these organisms are so evolved compared to the platyhelminthes or the eschehelminthes. One of the distinct factor is that platyhelminthes or you see the eschehelminthes, they are not free living organisms. They are actually either the endoparasites or they are actually taking up the nutrition from the host. And that actually is only um, uh, indications that these are the less developed uh, organisms compared to the, these organisms. So let's start our discussion about the with the analida and uh, discuss about the different properties of the phylum analida. So phylum analida, which actually uh, having the uh, different types of worms, uh, whether it is the uh, you know the Nesaria, earthworm, or the leech, 
these are mostly aquatic, marine or freshwater. Some are terrestrial, for example, the earthworm. Uh, they are uh, burrowing or the tuberculous, uh, sedentary or fleeing. Some are commensal and some are parasitic. So, for example, the earthworm is uh, commensal because it acquires uh, it uh, acquire the resistance, uh, the um, nutrition from the soil, and in return, it actually makes the soil more fertile. Whereas the leech is parasitic, so it actually acquires the the blood uh, or the nutrition from the host. Whereas, uh, so it is parasitic. The body is elongated, triploblastic, bilateral symmetry, and truly filaments and vermiform. So what you see here is, uh, by you know, the worm-like structure of the uh, the earthworm, and uh, it is actually a uh, triploblastic bilateral symmetry. So you can actually cut the uh, worm from the center, and that is actually going to divide the animal into two halves. Then it also contains the silom, so there is a uh, true body cavity, and then it is a vermiform. So this kind of uh, worm-like structure is called as a vermiform. The body is uh, metamerstically segmented externally by the transfer groups and uh, internally by the septa into a number of divisions. So what you see here is that the animal, the animal is divided into the different uh, into the segments like and these are the true segments like which are actually being uh, uh, divided from outside like the with the help of the transverse groups and internally by the septa. So these are the individual um, you know blocks which are actually making the body of the earthworm and each division is called as a segment metamere or the somite the body organization is a organ a great uh, system so it all actually contains the different types of organs for performing the different types of functions the epidermis is of single layer of the of columnar epithelial cells covered by the thin cuticle made up of, of chitin the body wall is contractile or dermomuscular consisting of the outer muscle fiber circular and inner longitudinal. So that actually is giving them the locomotory powers so that you will be able to, uh, so they will be able to move from one place to another place. The appendages are joined when they are present. Um, so these are having the joint appendages which means there will be no uh, 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 breakage. Then locomotory organs are segmented, repeated chitinously bristless called CT or the KT, embedded in the skin. It may be bored by the lateral fleshy appendages or the parapodia. Classical examples are the Neseris, earthworm and the leech. So this is the Neseris, this is the earthworm and this is the leech. So leech is a uh, parasitic uh, animal whereas the earthworm is the um, is a, is a commensal because it provides in, in the uh, the uh, it, it makes the soil more fertile now the presence of the the presence of the true schizocelius siloam usually divided into the compartment by the transverse septa uh, mostly well developed in leeches silomic fluid with cells or the carpus so this is the uh, your silomic uh, cavity where you have the different types of organs uh, the elementary canal is straight tube like and complete extending from the mouth to anus digestion is internally extracellular so this is the elementary canal where you have a mouth in the front so from where it actually takes up the nutrition then you have the pharynx these pharynx are going to you know chew the um, um, the food and that's how it is actually going to make it uh, digestible and then it is actually going to enter into the oesophagus then it will reach to the crop then it will reach to weather and then ultimately it will reach to the intestine where the digestion will take place and then ultimately it uh, will be at other end there will be an anus so it is actually having a complete digestive system which means it actually going to have the uh, mouth on one side the anus on the other side uh, respiratory uh, respiration occurs through the skin or the gills of the parapodia and the head. So on the skin it actually has the gills or the parapodia through which it actually takes up the oxygen from the outside. The blood vascular system is a closed type. The blood is red due to the presence of hemoglobin or the arteriomycin dissolved in plasma. So uh, you can see that the uh, the circulatory system is uh, di distributing uh, the, uh, the blood throughout the body of the earthworm and uh, 
it also has a heart like structure so it uh, and that actually pumps the blood and it has a red color blood which actually is because there is a uh, pigment called hemoglobin so this is exactly the same pigment what is present in our blood as well then secretion is by the metastatically disposed coiled tubes nephridia which complicate the siloam to the exterior uh, so this is what he is a circulatory system of uh, the um, uh, the animals belonging to the phylum Annelida. What you see here is is a closed type of uh, blood circulatory system where you have the the heart on one side and then you have the blood vessels and then uh, it actually supplies the blood to uh, into a enclosed uh, blood vessels like the dorsal vessels or the ventral vessels and. Uh, and because of that, it is a closed type of system where the blood is being uh, collected back to the heart again. Then the nervous system. Nervous system consists of a pair of cerebral ganglia, brain and the double ventral nerve cord having a segmented arranged ganglia and lateral nerve in each segments. The receptor organs include the tactical organs, taste buds, statocyst photoreceptors and sometimes eyes with the lenses in some so you can see that the nervous system is uh, quite well developed in the phylum Annelida compared to when we were discussing about the platyhelminthes or the eschihelminthes and uh, what you have here is a nerve ring which is actually in the front of the mouth so what you have is like for example uh, if you have an Annelida like this is a mouth then next to the mouth you have a nerve ring so that is a uh, starting of the the uh, nervous system and then the nerves are you know distributed throughout the body and that's how it is actually going to sense the different types of the signals like it has a tactile organs stage buds and statocyst and photoreceptors so that it will, can actually be able to perceive the different types of signals in some of the analytes it also has the eyes which actually can allow these uh, uh, organisms to uh, you know see the uh, uh, the uh, system uh, they are monoecious, hermaphrodic or the sexes separate, uh, cleavage spiral and determines. They are diocious or unisexual form also present. So uh, the uh, animals uh, present in the phylum Annelida could be of multiple types. It could be a monoecious or the hermaphrodite, which means the both the male and female organs are present in the same system or there could be a sex separate like and there could be diocious, which means the male and females are separate. Uh, for example, uh, in the in the case of uh, the uh, the earth form, the male and females are present in the same system. Uh, the development is direct in monoecious form, but indirect in the diocious form. So the development is also different if the animal is uh, belonging to the bisexual form or the monosexual form. The larva, when it is present in a trachophore, is characterized in case of indirect uh, development, while in the other, this stage is passed to the development. Regeneration is uh, very common and it is having a very high power of regenerations. The asexual reproduction occurs in some of the animals and some of the animals are having very high, uh, so they are also producing through the asexual manner. And the phylum Elidida is very uh, big, so it has actually uh, approximately 8700 species and that is still be divided into the classes so that class the distribution is because of the presence of the parapodia ct or metamers and the other uh, morphological features so what you see here is a life cycle of the earth form where what happened is that when in the uh, the male and female earthworm comes and they mate with each other because the ovaries are present onto the 13 segments so if you count from the front like if you can count the 13 segments, uh, it is actually going to give you the ovaries and through which the male and females are mating with each other and then they are actually, uh, you know, having a cocoon like stage and then cocoon is uh, going through the developmental stages. It is forming a juvenile uh, earthworm and then the juvenile earthworm is developing and forming the, uh, the, the, you know, the different developmental stages and then after the 17 days, the, jun the juvenile is actually getting converted into uh, adult form and then it is ready to be participate into the reproduction part. 
Uh, apart from that, uh, the final LIDA also has a very, very uh, significant applications, so whether it is the application of the earthworm, uh, because the earthworms are called as the farmer's friend's animal, because when the earthworms are present in the uh, soil, what they do is actually they eat the soil and uh, in this process, and then they, you know, they, they, they take up whatever the nutrition is present within the soil and then they actually uh, you know, throw the excreta and in this process what they do is they actually make the soil very porous and they allow the oxygen to come inside and that's how the soil is actually, uh, you know, become more and more, uh, um, you know, fertile. Uh, compared to that, the people are also using the, even the parasitic animal like leech in a, in a therapy which is called as the leech therapy. Uh, it is also called as the jaluka uh, therapy as well. And it is a kind of a Ayurvedic blood purification therapy, which means where you are actually utilizing the, uh, the bad habit of a leech to drink the blood. So what you do is you are actually allowing the leech to attach to a site where you are expecting uh, some kind of, uh, you know, accumulation of the um, dirty blood or you are actually having the some kind of uh, inflammations and that inflammation could be because there is a accumulation of the uh, unpurified blood. So in that case what you do is you add the leech to that particular site. So leech has a tendency to suck the blood irrespective of whether it is good or bad. So what will happen is the leech is going to eat that particular blood and in the same process it is actually going to suck up the dirty blood. And that's how it is actually going to remove the, the blood which is deoxygenated or containing the different types of toxic material. And that's how it is actually being utilized or being used as a Ayurvedic blood purification therapy where leeches are used to suck the impure blood from the infected part of the body. And it has a very, very significant uh, applications uh, because it is a non-invasive way of uh, you know, removing the blood and it is very, very safe because these leeches are uh, not causing any, uh, you know, any disease and they are disease free. So these are the cultivated leech, leech. they are not being like the leech which you can actually capture from the wild and you can use them because those and leeches could have also the some kind of infection. So they may cause a problem, but these leeches are actually being cultivated in a controlled condition in the lab and that's how they can be able to use for this particular purpose. Uh, so with this, uh, we have discussed about the phylum Annelida and uh, uh, so they are belonging to the, the class like true philomes and let's move on to the next phylum and that is the Arthropoda. So phylum Arthropoda is the largest phylum and the largest phylum where you have more than uh, like more than 70% organisms are belonging to this particular phyla. So we, uh, if you remember in the beginning, I said that we have approximately 1 million or 1.2 million species and the uh, arthropoda itself is actually contributing approximately 800,000 species. So it is actually a largest and the most successful phylum and it, it has a very, very diversified organisms. It starts from a very, very simple, like uh, it starts from the freshwater prawn or it has a house fly, it has a butterfly, it has a spider and it has some different kinds of organisms. Autopodas are solitary or colonial. So, for example, the colonial means that they are actually going to form the colony like the honeybee. They are mostly free living, so they don't depend on the host um, and they are free living. So they are actually having a very, very well developed physiology. They are only present and bilateral symmetry. So you can see here, right, this is a cockroach and you can have the bilateral symmetry. You can cut it from the center and it is actually going to be developed. It is going to give you the half half. I right? said so this side is uh, identical to this side and that's how this is this is kind of organism. Uh, uh, diff organization is called as the bilateral symmetry. Body is covered by the tough chitinous cuticle. So this actually has a chitin which is present. So you see this, this feather, this feather is made up of, of chitin and as well as the body is also made up of, of chitin. The body is divided into three parts, the head, thorax and abdomen. So this is the head part, right, where you have the mouth parts and that is a, you where you going to have the mouth where through which the cockroach is eating uh, the food. 
Then you have the thorax part. The thorax part is actually the abdomen part. So where you're going to have the, uh, you know, the elementary canal and all other kinds of part, right? So this is the abdomen part. Abdomen will continue like that. And then you, at the end, you're going to have the abdomen and then you're going to have the anus at the end. Uh, so in some cases, the head and thorax are also fused in some of the, uh, uh, the uh, organisms and that, and that then it is called as the cephalothorax. So in some animal head and thorax forced to form the cephalothorax. Uh, Arthropoda uh, processes legs for crawling. So you can see here, right, the, the most of these organisms actually contain the legs which actually allow them to go for like crawling, creeping or walking and some, some, uh, these are some organisms and uh, uh, some animals uh, which are present in the arthropoda are also having the wings for the flying, for example, the mosquito or the butterfly or housefly. The examples are very, very diversified and very, very huge. Like it's not only related to the insecta, but like they have a very, very uh, diversified uh, uh, animals. Like they have a cockroach, the butterfly, the scorpions, centipedes, uh, like um, and grasshoppers, ants, and this list is very big. As I said, you know, the arthropoda is the largest and the most successful phylum which is present in the animal kingdom. Uh, then the digestive system is complete and divided into the foregut, midgut, and the hindgut. So this is the digestive system where you have the mouth in the front and next to the mouth, you also have the mouth parts. Um, and then it is connected to the oesophagus and, uh, and then next to the oesophagus. So this is a, uh, this portion is called as the foregut, then midgut and the hindgut. And then at the end, you will see it has also has a rectum. So this is the first organism probably you will encounter where you are actually going to have the all uh, parts of the digestive system, whether it is the stomach or intestine, and then ultimately the rectum also. And then it is going to have the anus at the end. Uh, so this is from the, you know, the grasshopper. The mouth parts are highly evolved and used for biting, chewing and sucking. So these are the different types of mouth parts which are present in the, uh, in the, uh, in the cockroach. Like, so you have the maxillary pulp. So these are the side um, thing, right, which are, and then you have the paraglossa, then you have glossa, then you have the uh, you know, so, uh, mentum, and then you have the submentum, and then so these are very uh, well organized and diversified uh, mouth parts, and all these mouth parts are being used for different purposes, and that's how they can be very efficient in terms of the biting, chewing, and sucking. The circulatory system is of the open type. Com see, see, this is very different from the Enlida, right, where the circulatory system is closed. Here the circulatory system is open, the blood flows in open sinuses and it actually bars the organs. So this is the circulatory system where you will see that the, uh, the uh, blood is actually getting filled into the central cavity which is called as the hemocele and uh, it is actually going to you know rinse the, all the organs what is present in this particular system. And uh, that's how it actually provides the nutrition and all other kinds of uh, uh, you know, the oxygen and then it also protects the skittery system and all that. Uh, the respiratory organs are uh, gills, trachea and um, lungs and book lungs and book gills. So these are the, you know, the respiratory system which is being present and where you have the trachea and you have the thoracic spiracles and you have the, you know, the trachea like longitudinal trachea or the vertical trachea. And all these tracheas are actually having an opening here, like so, so that, it, so this is a membranous opening through which they can actually be able to take up the oxygen or they can be able to throw the carbon dioxide or the uh, whatever they, the gases they want to expel out. And this is the place where the people are utilizing and trying to, you know, destroy this particular kind of respiratory system. And that is what the people are doing with the heat, right? So you might have seen that. People are using the heat for killing the cockroaches. How the heat is working is that it is actually destroying the respiratory system of a cockroach. So that's how it, it enters uh, into the cockroach and then it actually blocks these uh, uh, membranous structures. And that's how it, uh, the cockroach cannot be able to breathe when you are, uh, you know, injecting or when you're, uh, you know, spraying the hits. And that's how it is actually going to kill the heat. 
the excretion take place by the green glands or the malpighian uh, glands or malpighian tubules nervous system is formed by the nerve ring and the double gangliotid nerve cords the sense organs are well developed in the form of antenna so antenna what you can see here is the different types of antenna what is present in the uh, in the in the arthropodas then it has a compound eye and then it also has the taste receptors uh, so what you see here is the compound eye and this is uh, compound eye is actually being used to you know uh, allow the arthropodas to visualize compound eye is actually a combination of different types of eyes uh, what is present in the different uh, uh, animals of belonging to the phylum arthropoda and uh, what you see here is actually a you know the the, uh, the collections of the uh, the eye parts and that's how it actually going to give the ability to these animals to absorb the light even at a very very dim light they could be able to absorb because the are uh, at the end the signal is going to be amplified because they may have approximately 2000 to 3000 tiny eyes and that's how it is actually going to have the compound eye and that's how you might have seen that the uh, mosquito or cockroach and all those can be able to travel and can be able to reach to their destinations uh, even when there is a, no light in the room also because that is good enough for them to observe it may not be good enough for the humans to observe because the humans light may sensitivity is very less compared to these compound compound eyes and that happened because all these tiny eyes are actually amplifying the signal uh, as far as the sex are concerned, the sexes are separate and it is showing a sexual dimorphism. If you remember, I was discussing about the sexual dimorphism when I was just talking about the uh, Ascaris and when we are talking about the phylum and uh, uh, phylum and Ascarisis. Uh, so, um, sexual dimorphism means there is a distinct uh, uh, features which are present on to the male compared to the female. So, what you see here is a cockroach this is a male cockroach and this is a female cockroach and what you see here is we just by looking at the cockroach you can be able to say that this is a big in size so and this is a small in size as, as far as the you know body structure is concerned and then the, you see the the eggs uh, the legs and all other kinds of features are different in terms of the male versus female and that is what is called as the sexual dimorphisms the animals are oviparous and, and the fertilization is internal. Uh, the development is uh, direct or the indirect in the like there will be some uh, uh, animals which are actually going through the metamorphosis. In some arthropoda like honeybees, individuals are produced by the parthenogenesis. So this is what you see here is uh, you know the life cycle of a honeybee where the adult is actually laying the eggs. And then these eggs are uh, going through the different uh, developmental stages like larva, pupa and all that and then ultimately it is forming the ad adult. Uh, so this uh, could happen because without uh, even going through with the sexual reproduction and can go without the, by the parthenogenesis. Some arthropodas are economically important like the honeybee, silkworm, lobsters, prawns, crabs and etc. So they are not uh, they are not causing any disease or they are non-infectious. So they uh, are uh, economically good. So honeybee, you know, honeybee is actually giving the honey, right? Uh, the silk worm is actually responsible for production of silk. Uh, lobster is or the prawn and crabs are being used as uh, you know the food items. Uh, some orthopodas are harmful and they are vector for the several diseases for example the mosquito and uh, so mosquito is a vector for many diseases like uh, the malaria chikungunya dengue and all other kinds of uh, infectious diseases so what they do is they just carry the you know the diseases so they when they bite a uh, one person uh, they actually going to carry the infection and then they will bite the next in person the, they will actually going to deliver the things uh, even the cockroaches are also known to spread the different types of diseases and centipedes as well as the spiders are also associated. So this is what you see here is the reproductive system of the, uh, the cockroach. So this is the, uh, the male and female uh, reproductive systems. 
and this is the female reproductive system where you have the well developed ovaries and then you have the oviducts and then you have the uh, place where you can have the fertilizations and uh, and then the uh, once uh, so fertilization is internal but the uh, the development and all other things are external as far as the cockroach is concerned even for the uh, mosquito also it is the same where the female mosquito is laying the eggs in the uh, in the st in the stored water and that's how it is actually and then these eggs are actually developing into the larva and all the kinds of stages and that's how it is actually forming the adults similarly the uh, the uh, cockroaches are also laying the eggs and that eggs you might have seen it is actually being uh, you know put it into a pouch like structure which is called as cocoon and in this co uh, pouches if you open this pouch what you see here is the eggs are actually being arranged on both side of this particular pouch and that's how uh, it could be 8 or it could be 16 uh, cockroaches are being developed from this single pouch so this is all about the two classes like the analidia or the arthropoda and then let's move on to the next uh, phylum and that next phylum is called as the mollusca so the phylum mollusca uh, is also called as the uh, they are essentially aquatic mostly marine few, few are free of freshwater and few are terrestrial forms what you see here is uh, you know uh, you, the the still form of the animals uh, they may be found in a hidden parasite in the interior of some other animals so they are some are the, uh, also parasitic so they are formed inside the animal also they vary in size from the giant to squids and claim to the little snail uh, millimeter long so this is a snail right <coughs> uh, they have at least two character uh, character radula and mantle not found elsewhere the body is soft, unsegmented, except in um, uh, this particular group. Uh, bilateral symmetry, silomates, and then triploblastic. So they have the three germ layers like the ectoderm, endoderm, and the mesoderm. Uh, they have a tissue system grade of body organizations. So they don't have the organ system, they have a tissue system. Uh, the body consists of the head, foot, mantle, and the visceral mass. So body is consists of the head foot, mantle and the visceral mass. The body is clothed with the one layer often called as the epidermis. The body is common, commonly protected by an exoskeleton calcareous shell of one or more piece secreted by the mantle. So this is what is the external, uh, you know, the exoskeleton which is made up of, of the uh, calcareous shell and which has been secreted by the mantle. The classical example is Chiton, Octobus, Sepia, and Pila. So these are the what you see here is a uh, Pila actually, and then these are the different form of the Sepia, and they are actually being present inside. Uh, so this is like all of the example like the Pila, Helix, uh, Limus, Dental, Unio, Octopus. So these are the separate some of the examples, and this is the Chiton. Uh, in a typical uh, mollusk organism, what you see here is that it has uh, three different parts and it actually has a mantle which going to secrete this, uh, uh, you know, the exoskeleton. And within that, you're going to have all the different types of organs. It's going to have the nerve cords, it's going to have the mouth in the front and uh, then it has a foot that foot is important for them to provide the locomotions then it has a stomach uh, digestive glands uh, for digesting the things and then it has uh, you know gonads and then it has the intestine then it has a trusilom and it also has the mental and the anus in the front then it also has the gills which actually allows them to go for the respiratory systems uh, the head is distinct, bearing mouth, eyes, tentacles, and other sense organs, except in the pelipsida and the scaphova. So you can see here is it has a very distinct head, which actually contains the uh, the eyes and mouth and tentacles and other sense organs. Uh, the ventral uh, body is modified into a muscular plaw-like structure. The foot, which is variously modified for creeping, borrowing, and swimming. 
so what you see here is a video where uh, so which actually I have prepared uh, and uh, what you see here is that a uh, pila or the uh, uh, is uh, trying to move right and what you see here is this actually if you see this particular type of food so this is actually a food which is uh, modified for creeping so this food is actually so it is actually gliding on that particular uh, food so the food is actually a muscular plow like surface so it is actually like uh, like a kind of a surface and on this surface only the the, the organism is actually gliding uh, you can imagine this is exactly the similar kind of system what is present in our tanks right so if you have seen a tank what what is there in the tank is a chain right on which you are actually having a body right so this chain actually moves onto wheels right so there are wheels and when these wheels moves the tank is moving in any direction and that's how the tank has an advantage compared to all other vehicles what is present in the army that it actually can go to any surface because it does not require its sir the road or any other type of surface to be prepared because what it is doing it is running on its own surface this is exactly the same advantage what the, the uh, animals belonging to the uh, phylum mollusca is because the animal has its own feet at the bottom and on top of this it is actually having the body. So what happened is this feet is actually sliding onto the surface. So this body is actually and below to this it is actually is very slimy right. So it actually slides and that's how it does not have much friction. And because it has provided its own uh, surface, it does not require the organism to be dependent on to the type of surface is present. It can move on to any surface. The mantle or the palladium is a fold of a body wall that leaves between itself and main body, the mantle cavity. The visceral mass contains the vital organ of the body in a compact form, taking the form of a dorsal hump or the domain dome so this is what you see here is the the mental like and that actually house the most of the vital organs whether it is uh, organs related to the digestive system or whether it is a uh, organs related to the circulatory system and then at the bottom you see this is the mouth this is the food right what we are talking about which actually allows them to go for the motion so i you will see that i have prepared a small movie clip and where i have shown you how the uh, the organism is moving from one part to another part and this movie i have prepared in uh, in our institute the body cavity is hemocele the coelom is reduced and represented mainly by the pericardial activity gonadial activity and the nephridia the digestive tract is simple with anterior mouth and the posterior anus but in a gastropods or the scaphoids uh, and the cephalopods in the intestine becomes a U shape, bringing the anus to a uh, anterior part. So, in the different parts, different uh, type of animals, you have the organization of the mouth and the anus differently. In some cases, it is the straight, so the mouth is on one side and the anus is on the other side. Whereas in some cases, the there will be a U turn, right? So, because of that, the anus will come somewhere closer to the mouth. But that is a very very minor issue which is related to the different organizations uh, organization of the digestive system within the animal itself then the rasping organs reticula usually present except in the pelicephoda the circulatory system is open type except in the cephalopods so circulatory system is an open type where the blood is actually going to be filled into the cavity and that is actually going to be the way it is actually going to provide the nutrition, the nutrition as well as the oxygen to the different part of the body. The respiratory organ contain numerous gills or the cytonidia usually provided with the uh, ophradia and at the base the lung is developed in a terrestrial forms. So in the in the terrestrial form you have the lungs, whereas in the aquatic or the marine form you have the different types of gills. The respiration is direct or by by uh, by gill or the lung or the both. The hemocyanin is the respiratory segment. So they, this is very different, right? You have the hemocyanins, which means the blood is actually going to be a blue colored blood compared to that the red colored blood is present in the uh, human beings because the human being contains the 
hemoglobin compared rather than hemocyanin excretion is by the uh, the by the kidneys the nervous system consists of the cerebral pleural pedal and the visceral ganglia joined by the longitudinal and transverse connections and the nerves the ganglia usually form a circumtring rings sense organ consists of the eye statocyst receptor for touch smell and taste uh, so this is uh, all the organs what is being present in the in a uh, union and uh, what you see here is it has the gills for the respirations then it has the mental then it has the male and female gonads then it has the ganglions and it has a foot which is used for the locomotions then it has a mouth in the front and then it has the anus at the bottom so this is like uh, and then it has the heart which is uh, connected through the different types of aorta and that's how it is actually going to provide the blood the blood the circulatory system is of the open type and then you have the digestive system where you have the mouth in the front and then you have the well developed stomachs then you have the intestine and then uh, the intestine is then ultimately at the end you are going to have the anus so this is all about the phylum mollusca and uh, apart from the uh, this uh, you also have the different types of sexes which means it is actually a dioecious which means it actually has a separate male and female but in some cases it is also monoecious which means it is actually hermaphrodic which means the uh, both sex are present in the same organisms the fertilization is external or the internal depending on the different types of species the deployment is direct or with metamorphosis to the trachophore stage called as the veliger larva so you can see here is that you have the two organism one is male and the female so these are the dioecious plant the dioecious uh, are uh, animals so one is male is uh, throwing the sperms into the uh, and the uh, ovum by the female and then there will be an external fertilization and uh, after the fertilization it is actually going to form the larva then this larva will actually go through with the developmental stages and ultimately it is going to form the adults so this is all about the uh, mollusca and uh, so far what we have discussed we have discussed about anelida arthropoda and mollusca and let's move on to the next higher level of uh, animals which is called as the echinodermata so echinodermata is a very exclusive class because they are the uh, spiny skin animals they are mostly being present at the bottom of the uh, ocean so they are exclusively marine so there is no freshwater uh, echinodermata possible solitary sedentary or free living colonial and they are benthoic which means they are present at the bottom of the ocean uh, they are radial symmetry with the pentamerous symmetry which means they are radial symmetry means they are actually can be divided into two parts either by any mean right so i think we discuss about this radial symmetry and they are the pentamerous symmetry which means they are going to have the five uh, uh, arms in their body structure so a classical example is the starfish the bodies are spherical elongated and star shaped the body does not have a well defined head so there is no well defined head like structures it's a kind of a flat surface right the spiny exoskeleton present made up of of the calcareous plates it has a presence of water vascular system in the body for the locomotions the water enter the water vascular system through an opening called as the metropolite so what is mean by the water circulatory system is that the system is composed of the canals connecting uh, into the numerous tube fits so it has a canal like structure so you, you can see that it has a radial canal on so all these uh, arms are actually having the canal like structures and then the water is actually entering into this system through a opening which is called as a metroporite so once the water enters into this it actually goes out through the these radial canals and uh, so echinodermas move by the alternatively contracting muscle that force water into the tube feet causing them to extend and push against the ground and then relaxing to allow the feet to retract which means once uh, so they have the you know the contracting muscles through which the water is actually pushed in and then it goes out from these uh, 
these uh, radial canals and because of that it actually can be able to uh, you know push the uh, grounds and that's how it actually can move through uh, into the, uh, in, within the surface of the ocean the examples are starfish which is a classical example of the Chimatermeta, then you have sea archin, then you have bitter sea, bitter star, and you have also have the star sea cucumber. So these are the examples like sea uh, starfish uh, and all these kind of thing. And then you have the Echinodermata. Echinodermata are carnivorous, so they are actually always feeding on to the molluscans like the pila and all unio. Uh, they move with their arms and tube fit, like the suckers, what is present onto their uh, arms, right? The respiration is by the peristomial gills and the circulatory system is greatly reduced. It is of open type and heart is absent. The nerve system is simple with the ring around the mouth and the radial nerve in the arms. The sexes are separate and fertilization is external. The development is indirect. They show a high power of regenerations. So, the uh, sexes are separate which means the male and females are separate. So, you can see that the, this is the development, these are the, you know, the life cycle of the, one of the echinodermata. So, where you can have the eggs as well as the sperm being produced by the, uh, you know, the adults. Then they will swim and fuse and then there will be uh, uh, the fertilizations and then eventually there will be a, metamorphosis and that's how it is actually going to form the adults. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca and Echinodermata and all these organisms does not contain the notochord, right, which means all these are the non-chordatas. So, whatever we have discussed so far are the non-chordata compared to that the, if the notochord is present uh, the organisms are going to call as chordata, right? But there is an organism which is actually being uh, connected or which is are going to be considered as the intermediate between the organism which just which contains the notochord or the organism which does not contain the notochord. And these organisms are called as the hemichordata. Hemi means the 50-50, right? So it has the notochord but it also does not have the all the features which are belonging to the non chordata so let's discuss about the hemichordata as well so phylum hemichordata it are, these are exclusively marine animals usually lives at the bottom of the sea they are mostly free living some may be sedentary body is soft fragile vermiforms and the unsegmented so the body is divided into three parts, the proboscis, collar and trunk. So what you see here is the body part. So you see uh, it has a proboscis, collar and trunk. The buccal cavity gave rise to a rod-like structure, uh, rod-like structure which is considered as a notochord by some scientists. So buccal cavity actually contains a uh, road like structures and which is sometimes being used or considered as a notochord because it provides the strength and uh, that's how the people are actually you know considered that we should keep these animals in not into a non chordata or chordata but into a separate phylum which is called as a hemichordata. They feed on the microorganisms present in the water and they are spiky, spinky skinned animals. The classical example is the uh, balanoglossus and the sexoglossus. So these are the examples what is present uh, of the uh, organisms belonging to the hemichordata. Uh, the proboscis helps to make the burrow while entire body brings about the motions. Uh, so this is the proboscis which is the kind of head actually and that helps in uh, making a you know burrow and that's how the body is moves into that particular directions. The elementary canal is complete. So it actually has the all the parts of the elementary canal, but it is either the straight or the U shape. So for example, you see here in this case, the elementary canal is U shape where you have the mouth in the front and then you have the anus at the end. And in between you have the all of the body uh, elementary canals. Uh, the respiration occurs by the paired gills, so you have the gill slits and through which the respiration occurs. Uh, the gills open as the gill slits and uh, the circulatory system is simple and closed type. 
the blood is colorless so it does not uh, contain any kind of pigments or it may be containing a pigment which does not have uh, uh, the intensity into the visible lights the nervous system is embedded in the epidermis on the both dorsal and ventral side the sexes are separate so there will be separate male and female the fertilization is external and the development is indirect to the free swimming larva uh, and this phylum is the connecting link between the non chordata and the chordata so you can imagine that uh, we have classified the animals into the different types of phylum and that's how we could be able to understand this important aspect that these are the organisms which are actually being the connecting link between the non chordata and chordata so if we study these organisms we could be able to understand the developmental stages the evolutions and all other kinds of properties how the non chordata got evolved and become the chordata and what are the different uh, advantages these organisms are offering when they are turning from the non chordata to chordata so with this uh, we have discussed uh, about the annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata and the hemichordata which are the connecting link between the chordata as well as the hemichordata within the chordata we have the different types of groups which are actually being um, you know having the different types of properties so that actually we are going to discuss in our subsequent lectures so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here in a subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the chordata and within the chordata we have the different types of classes and groups so that actually will allow you to understand the you know basic properties of the chordata and how it is different and evolved from the uh, non chordata so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here thank you